Okay, so here we go. <laughs> Group effort, much appreciated. Thank you, Sinem, for Nashville, Tennessee. As I mentioned, I have two degrees in flute performance. One was from Tennessee Tech University. Anybody heard of that? Just over the way? Yeah. So uh, I got my bachelor's there and then my master's in flute performance. And then after that, the story goes that, uh, like I said, I have two degrees. And I like to say that I have one degree that says I can play flute good and another degree that says I can play flute real good. Right? So that's what music performance degrees kind of were, right? They teach you how to play your flute really well, but it didn't really teach me a whole lot of like, what do I do after this? Well, the story goes that the reason I have all this other stuff after my name is that I've been injured four different times as a result of playing my instrument, which you can change, which seems a little excessive, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ever heard of interlock? Arts game. No? Okay. So Interlochen is one of the, there we go, that one. Okay. So Interlochen is one of the oldest arts camps in <laughs> southern Michigan. And I went from being, has anybody ever gone from being a big fish in a small pond to a small fish in a big pond when it comes to, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what happened. So I went from playing, um, I don't know, an hour or two a day, maybe on a good day, to eight hours a day for eight weeks with no physical preparation, right? So I was thrown into being the, being the small fish in a big pond, right? And so when that happened, I realized that, oh my gosh, I am not the best person here. Far from it. Oh my gosh, I have got to work. Uh, there are a lot of people way better than me, and I've got to step up, right? So I did. Um, the thing is, when that happens, we tend to get overuse syndromes. Why? Because we do the same repetitive motion over and over again, which happens to for us to be this, right? So what happened is I ended up after, oh, about the fourth week, and I've got another month to go, I ended up with tendonitis in my wrist. I had a knot about this big. I was 16. So I go home, and I go to the doctor, and they say, I show them what's going on. I said, I've got tendonitis. Um, you should quit playing. Quit. I have auditions and honor bands and all kinds of things coming up. Oh, yeah. This is not an answer. They said, well, we'll send you to physical therapy. And, you know, if that doesn't work, we'll give you a cortisone shot. Right. And I would do anything to avoid a shot, right? So I went to PT. It resolved itself. I didn't quit playing. We're good. Okay. Second time, I get injury happened when I was in graduate school. So we're going to fast forward way from 16 to 20 something. And uh, I'd always loved working out, but I had no idea what the form was. I didn't know what I was doing. And so what happened was I was in the gym. And I was doing whatever the magazine said to be because I wanted to look like the people in the fitness guys. So I was like, well, if I do that, I would probably look like that, right? <laughs> Not I know what good form was, right? So I'm in the gym and I'm doing like dumbbell presses. And I was probably doing them like this because I didn't know you're supposed to go like this. <laughs> and uh, I'm, on, I'm, I'm on an incline and I'm pressing and all of a sudden I feel this sharp pain, right? Slowly drop the dumbbells and I try to get up on the table. Ever so gently, I finally make my way back to my house and like the pain doesn't get any better. Like it's, it's, it's not good. I go to my office, I lay on the floor. It was a solid 30 minutes before I could figure out how to get myself off the floor. I make my way over to health services. They say, oh yeah, you've torn a muscle in the back. You should quit playing. What? I'm in school for performance. This is not an option. They said, well, you know, here's some muscle relaxers and I'll give you a prescription for massage. Um, you should, you know, stop playing. Uh, well, okay. Five muscles. So when you have a muscle strain, that's the same as muscle tear, right? And so I tore the muscle behind my shoulder. Did you get behind your shoulder blade? That. The problem is it was sharp. So what happened was, the third injury, this is where it all came together. The third time, I was cramming for an audition. Anybody heard of the president's, president's own? Yeah, so I thought that my goal in life, my dream job was to play for the green president's own. Zero hours a day, two, three to four hours a day because I had, it was a piccolo audition. And I, I'm a piccoloist, but I didn't know any of the orchestral rep. We hadn't learned it in grad school, believe it or not. We'd learned Baroque flute and all those other things, which are great. But I needed to know the orchestral literature for piccolo, and I had no idea. So 
I wasn't employed. I wasn't doing anything else. So I just went like zero to 100, started practicing up to four hours a day. Pretty soon I couldn't straighten my arms. I couldn't breathe. Asthma's in my back. Everything hurt. I couldn't, and I had this sharp pain down here. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I go to a bone joint clinic and go see the doctor. And guess what he says? Here's your quick plan. And I said, you're fired. I deserve a better answer than this. Tell me what's going on. And he's, okay. So the deal is you've got a muscle imbalance between here and here. So think about it. When we, in front of us, this arm goes this way. We never do the, the opposite. Okay? So if you put your arms up this way, this feels natural, right? Put your arms this way. What do you notice when you do that? When you go the opposite way, you notice that the, the different muscles feel tight or strained or whatever, but yet we don't feel it this way because it feels natural because we've already created that imbalance. You find out what that imbalance is when you go the opposite way. It's weird, right? Yeah, exactly. So there's, a, there's an imbalance between here and here. And what the thing is, you've got a, a knot in the muscle, your um, pec muscle right here. And yours is so big and so strong that ordinarily what I would do in someone in your situation is that I would give them a cortisone shot right in the middle of that knot. It would come. Is that um, that muscle is right over your heart and it would probably kill you. B is, so you should quit playing. Plan C is, so well, I've got this cream and I'm like, fine, shut up. I'll take your cream, you're fine. And so I took his little cream and I, I don't have a clue what it was. And I went off to my audition, played in pain, did terrible and said enough is enough. There has got to be another ink. Like there is no reason that we should be in this kind of pain. But it, uh, it put the, the light bulb on my head. I'm like, okay, wait a minute, muscle and mouth. You can change the side. Does this make sense? Well, let me look into it. So I've always loved strength training. I love going to gyms. Anybody else a gym person? Anybody else like lifting weights? I like it too. So I love the feeling of being strong and being in control of my body and just being able to have that endurance and that strength and stuff, right? And also being able to change the way you look. But we hear this in the music community, or at least I did when, when I was, but when I was coming up to the, the different schooling that, oh yeah, stay out of the gym, you could hurt your fingers. You could hurt your chopping onions. In fact, I cut off the end of my fingers chopping onions. Yeah, watch out, make sure you know that. <laughs> but going to the gym is less dangerous than chopping an onion. Let's be real about this, right? Same thing, like if you if we did that same, um, we, we had that, that same thought with anything. We wouldn't be driving cars or doing anything. Strength training is only as dangerous as uh, relating to how ignorant you are about to. Okay? So if you have proper form, you're going to be great. You also want to stretch what's tight, and then we strengthen what's weak. We integrate that into how your entire body works. You're good to go. You can switch. So this is, does the, does the video work? National. But it isn't. Cheesy, right? So Facebook contacted me and asked me to be in this this um this ad. I still don't know what the point of it was. It didn't really help. And it's like this is not when you say musician specific strength training, uh, running on a treadmill. They're like, can you do sit ups and play your flute? It's like, really? Yeah. It's like I get this question all the time. Fitness for musicians. Does that mean I play my guitar on the treadmill? Like, why would you think that? Oh, does that mean breathing exercises? <laughs> it's really complicated. You can switch. So here's what it is. We're going to talk about muscle mouth. These are some students that I had at Stetson University, and they all came to my advanced class, and I said, do you have pain? Show me where it hurts. Do any of those positions look familiar to you? Who can relate to those? Here. Go back, shoulders behind the shoulder blades, right? Here and here. Yeah, you're not alone. Next slide. Okay, check out the posture. They don't know how to take any pictures. What do we see? Can anybody tell me, tell me some of the things you see? Yeah, 
This one. Yeah, that. Yeah, that one. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We got a couple of these. Okay. Um, and when we got a couple of these, and we got a couple of these, why do you think? Now, number one, do you think you guys do this at some point? Sure. Is it wrong to be to move when you play? But why do you think she might be doing that? Any idea? Doing this? Huh? Bingo, number one. So they've been playing all week. This is by the end of the week. They've been playing all day, every day, and all these different classes and things. If you don't build up the muscle strength for the rest of your body, you don't just play. We're not athletes with small muscles. I'm so tired of that. You don't just play your flute drama shirt. You don't just play the flute and fingers, right? Use your entire body to play flute, as you can see, right? So if your whole body is not strong enough to hold that up in this position, and be able to breathe well and have great posture and all those things, you're gonna look like that, right? Because your body is amazing. It is gonna compensate and find a way for you to do the thing you want to do, even if it's a detriment. It's gonna find a way. Okay, next slide. So we got some quick stats. Uh, I know it's a whole lot of words there, but the big point here is that up to 93% of musicians are going to experience playing related pain or injury over the course of their careers. 93%, 84, 41, 92. These are huge stats. To put it in perspective, gymnasts freak out when their numbers get to 10%. Gymnasts. And yet us, we're like, yeah, it's part of the gig. No, it's not. No, it is not. Next slide. So, but what about strength training? Can it help? So what the thing is, we have done so many studies that show that musicians have all kinds of pain related pain, injury problems, right? The problem is hope is not a strategy. Something hurts, we just, Many times you've heard, we'll just rest. We'll just stretch. Just rest and stretch. Okay, stretch what? <laughs> and also, when you rest, when you come back to play, is the pain gone or does it come back? No, that's because rest doesn't fix it. We'll talk about that tomorrow. So what do we do? Stretch training help? Sure. Does stretching help? Also, yes. Sometimes, depending on what you stretch. But can strength training help? Yes. And so what these stats say is that when you have targeted strength training program for your instrument and for your body, boom, 29 to 59% of the instrumental play. And I forgot what the you are, but <laughs> like positive things, right? So, yes, I can. Next slide. Okay. And we got another one. So, all of that, blah, 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 blah. You can get this on PubMed if you ever want to do any kind of research on that. At T1, the intervention was rated to be moderately to highly effective for three performance related factors strengthening muscles that support play, learning to make techniques that support play, and posture. And that was a 10 week exercise. Program. I mean, this is great. We need more of these, right? So that's how I kind of got started. So, common problems among woodwinds this is us. Who can relate to some of these painful areas? We get the neck, pain in the neck, yep, Ooh, jaw. Yeah, that's we had uh, probably the TMJ. Shoulder, back, wrist, sometimes elbows. You get an imbalance, like I said, between the chest and the back. So aka the anterior and posterior chain. You get asymmetric and rotational deficiency, which is a big fancy word for hey, we turn the this way when we play it and we don't go this way. Right? Same thing with the neck. We turn our neck to the left. You turn your neck to the right when you play, and that would be super awkward. We get an imbalance there. So we get all these different imbalances, asymmetrical imbalances left to right. So we get tight on the left, the chest, the neck, the upper traps, the front of your delts. Weak is going to be your rotator cuff on the left side, especially upper back, rhomboids. We're going to get into all of that. You get overall core weakness to include your butt. If your butt isn't really strong, then you are not really strong. And you also can get tight forearms, right? When you have tight forearms, guess where that shows up? In your wrist. So something to learn is that the site of pain is not always the source of pain. So if something hurts, look to either the opposite or up the chain. A lot of times, unless, okay, so like if you hurt your finger, if you stub your toe, yeah, your toe is the problem. But if you get something like an overuse injury, you can go to the next, uh, like an overuse injury, look at the, look at the, up the chain. It's the site of pain is not necessarily the source of pain. Oh, how do we fix it? Too easy. We're going to stretch what's tight. Then we're going to strengthen what's weak. 
Again, if you have an injury, you definitely don't want to self-diagnose. How many times have I heard, oh, I have carpal tunnel? How do you know? Yeah, it hurts. Guess what? You're, you're right. We all have a carpal tunnel that's right here, but you don't have carpal tunnel syndrome, more than likely not. So rest, ice, compression, elevation, sometimes that can help, but just don't guess. This is the big thing, right? Go see a bone and joint doctor. Go see a sports med doctor. One of those are really great. Going to see a, a, a physical therapist can also help, right? So strength training after PT, strength training during physical therapy, actually both, because physical therapy, who's been? Yeah, right? You know, they, they make you do strength training moves, right? They just seem to be really small and light, right? So you can increase your body awareness with that, but also when you're strength training while you're going to the physical therapist, it helps you incorporate your entire body. <laughs> so this is just a quick overview if you're interested in getting way more into with that. So we, like I said, it's the it's stretch that's tight, you inhibit, you lengthen, you activate, which is the strength that's weak, you integrate your entire body. Next. Okay, so let's do a quick exercise. If anybody wants to lay on the floor, you can do this. This is great for laying on the floor. But if you don't, you can sit in your chair. Either way, lie on the floor, sit in your chair. If you fall asleep, time. Yeah, find a good spot. <laughs> All the phones. <laughs> if you don't want to lie on the floor, that's fine. I just want you to get very comfy in your chair. All right, so we're gonna do a quick body awareness exercise. Right? So a couple of things while we do this, there's no judgment here. And that sounds funny, but I don't want you to judge your body. I want you to just notice, right? You're gonna compare things left to right, up to down. I want you to have a sense of curiosity about this. Okay? There's, no, there's no right or wrong here. There's no good or bad. There's no, I should. Uh -uh. Notice it, okay? So if you get a sense of, judgment all of a sudden when I ask one of these questions, just notice that you judged and thought, oh, I should this or that. And then be like, oh. Notice where you are on the floor. Get very comfortable. You can close your eyes if you like. Be a little awkward. <laughs> So I want you to just relax. I want you to notice what part of your left foot is touching the floor. Or if you're seated, what part of your left foot is touching the floor or not? Is your left foot touching your foot? Is it your entire foot? Is it the arch? Is it the pelvis? Is it here? Do you notice any tension in your foot? And if, if your leg is flat? How much space is there between your heel and the ground? Left. If you're seated, can you see that? If you're lying on the floor, what part of your left calf is touching the floor? Which direction are your toes pointing? Are they pointed up? Are they out? Are they in? Find yourself clenching your toes. Are you relaxed? To your left thigh. Do you feel anything there? Space underneath your left ankle and floor. Hello. What about your left leg? Left hip. What do you feel part what part of that is touching the chair? If you lower, do you feel your sit bone on the left side? Yes or no? Right. All right. How much space is there between your low back and the floor? The low back and the chair. Compare that to the space underneath your knee and underneath your ankle. You notice do you feel anything in the low back? You can think about it. Go up bone by bone. Fine. Is it lying flat? 
You only feel the inside, outside. Shoulder feel. If you're seated, do you notice it hanging? Is it shrugging? Is it forward? Is it backwards? Compare your left shoulder to your right shoulder. Backwards, backwards, shrugging. If you're lying on the floor, how does it feel compared left to right? Do you notice tension anywhere? Do you notice pain anywhere? Does it feel good? And what about your neck? How much space is there between your neck and the floor? Space between your neck and the floor, and the space between your low back, the space underneath your knee, the space underneath your ankle. Seated, there is some space. Compare left side to right side, do you feel anything? Is your head pointed straight? Are you tilted to the left? Do you look to the right? All right, gently and come. The center, do you tend to shift to the left, shift to the right? All right, I want you to go down your left arm. What part of your left arm is touching the floor or touching you or touching the chair? Down to your elbow. On the floor, how much space is there between your elbow and the floor? If there's any space. Let's go down to the forearm, the left forearm. What do you notice? What part is touching the floor, touching the chair, touching anything? Space underneath your left wrist. What direction is your hand? You want to say? Direction is your hand facing? Is it palm up? Is it palm down? Right. What do you feel? Finger to finger. So one turn. What do you feel? And then I want you to move. Pinky finger. Middle finger. There's no right or wrong here. There's no should or should not. Just notice. And I want you to compare your left pinky to your right pinky. Right I want you to go finger by finger. Just quickly check in. What do you notice? If you want to move them together, do they feel the same when you move them? Left to right, right to left. Up to your neck. How does it feel? Does it feel tense? Do you have any judgment? Do you feel like they should be the same? Just something to notice. It's okay. And then I want you to compare your right forearm to your left forearm. Elbow, right elbow to left elbow. Let me get up to the right shoulder and left shoulder. How do they feel? Is your right shoulder and your left shoulder, do they touch the chair the same way? Is one higher than the other? Is one lower? Is one sticking out? To put it flat, could you trace your shoulder blade if you had to? You know, things around the shoulder. Now go to the right side of your low back. Compare the right side to your low back to the left side. Right glue to the left glue. Right hip to the left hip. Right hip to the left hip. What part of the, the chair, what part of the floor do they touch? Are they simple? The same. And then down the right. Do a quick check in all over your body. Now that you're very aware, take stock of what you notice. Was there judgment anywhere? Was there a should or a or these should be the same or or that shouldn't be there? Floor. Or not, but I want you to don't get up yet. But I want you to think if I move first to get up, what is the and when you feel ready, go ahead. That's not the same. We all can do it. I mean, y'all can stand up if you wanted to. What would you move first? Everybody should feel very interested. Who knows something? Anybody notice anything? 
But yeah, what'd you notice? Interesting. Okay. Yeah, what'd you notice? Left hand or one of the fingers? Left hand? Yeah. You didn't know that? About like uh, our backs, my back, like lower backs are really hurt really bad. Oh, really? Yeah. So you didn't even know it was hurting? <laughs> Both sides or just the one side? Both sides. It's back a little bit. Interesting. Were you able to let it go? Did it feel the same? If I didn't think about it, then it didn't hurt. But when I would think about it, it started hurting. Well, oh, that's fine. Okay. Well, maybe it's fine, but <laughs> anybody else notice anything? Yeah? I completely relate to this. Yes. <laughs> I had the same thing this last weekend. Yeah. Did anybody else notice anything that they were really kind of surprised about or something that really confirmed? Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. My like right shoulder hurts, but like right where it connects to my neck. And I've always had issues with that. Okay. It's on the right side, on the left side. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yeah. Both of them? Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. It's like a ghost. Good. Yeah, between the shoulder blades. We'll fix it tomorrow. Yeah, what? So you got to put your neck first. Did anybody else have that weird thought of like, what would I move? What would I? Is it a finger? Is it? Was it what you saw? Huh? So when I said, when think about, um, I think you fell asleep. So, so I had this class with Ava at Florida State, and this was the dynamic integration class, and she would say that all the time. And her Swiss accent, she said, I'm just, I feel falling asleep. This will pay you my voice. I get an A for falling asleep in class. It's me. <laughs> it would happen more times than not. So the question was when you're lying on the floor, think about what would you move first to get up? When I say that, is there any immediate sense of judgment? Well, I should do this. Should. <laughs> yeah. So the question is, was it the same as what you thought? No? No? You got up with your neck first. Well, that's odd. Okay. Anybody else get up with something that they, they, they did that first or they didn't? You just move and that's totally fine. There's no right or wrong. Okay. You guys can pass it again. We're gonna do all the exercises. Andrew, that was a very you answer. What? <laughs> You'd get up with your neck first. <laughs> all right. So like I said, tomorrow morning we're gonna do the workshop where we actually go into actual exercises. I want you to think about what um what we've all what we've talked about. So the exercises that we're going to, some of what we're going to cover, these are all in my book, by the way. So uh, if you want to grab it or uh, the ebook version, they're also all on my YouTube channel. So the uh, QR code that I gave you, you should be able to get that. But these are the exercises that we're going to be doing tomorrow. So uh, remember we said you want to stretch what's tight, you want to strengthen what's weak, and then you want to integrate. I usually, when I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, this is the stuff that I do. Right? We do them in this order. So SMR is self myofascial release, aka self massage release. That's what's easier way to say it, right? So I use a lacrosse ball a lot of times to get points in my chest, which tends to be really tight. So who had pain between their shoulder blades? That's me. Yeah. Okay. So one of the best ways to deal with that is you take a lacrosse ball. And like I said, we'll do this tomorrow. So you're going to put this in between um, you and the wall, right against your chest. We're going to roll around, find tender spots. So if that's you, I want you to take your fingers. Everybody just do this anyway. Try your left side first. Take your fingers and push on your chest, right below your collarbone, down by your armpit. Anybody feel anything tender? Yeah. yeah. Press on it. But don't press on it so hard that you go and you hold your breath. That means you're pressing too hard. Okay. <laughs> the longer you hold it, the pain should go down. Now, if you're pressing too hard, you're either going to hold your breath or you're going to guard, you're going to shrug, you're going to do all this stuff, right? So just relax. That's why I like the ball because you're not using it. Okay. 
So then we would stretch that and stretch your chest, stretch your wrist, stretch your neck, any of those painful points. Here's something also to remember. If it hurts, more than likely it's weak. Not always, but a lot of times the painful stuff is weak. Because did you know your chest was tight? No. Does it hurt? Oh, no. okay. So we're going to mobilize. Once we've got everything relaxed, I'm going to mobilize stuff. And then we're going to get this. We're going to get the stuff that's been like not working. We're going to get it to work. Stuff like chin tucks. We can all do that right now. This is one of those things that if you do this exercise and you look pretty doing it, you're not doing it right. We should all look like job of the night. Right? It's a really ugly move. <laughs> but if we all do it, it's okay, right? Also, nobody look at anybody else because it's not attractive. But a chin tuck, has anybody ever done these? Yeah. So what I really like to do is I like to use them in a band and go sideways. Because think about it. We turn which way? Play. Loop, we go left. So if you turn your head to the right just now, you feel a difference from left to right if you really think about it. But right? Left feels natural and right doesn't feel so much. So we need the strength from the right side. So what you're going to do is you're going to tuck your chin down slightly, right? And then I want you to think like your chin is on the rails and it's going to go straight back. To feel a nice little stretch at the base of your shoulders. Think all through here. Yeah. Yeah, you should feel okay, relaxed. So, and this is not a, you know, you're really not trying to do this really hard, right? But you're gonna come down and go back. Notice what it does to your whole posture. It changes, right? The minute I say posture, <laughs> we got taller. <laughs> so those are some chin tucks, right? What I love to do, and we'll do these tomorrow, is that you take the band, rotate, and do the right. It's gonna strengthen that right side. You can go to the next. We'll do the rest of this tomorrow. We're running on so for video, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna, that's on my, um, we'll do that tomorrow. That's on my YouTube channel. The basics of form, here are the basics. We'll go to the, next one. the basics are that you wanna brace. We can learn this today. So brace, your spine should stay neutral. What I mean, brace, like brace for impact. What would you do? You're gonna, if someone is gonna come up and punch you, what would you do? You wouldn't go, hey. You also wouldn't go, oof, because that means face closer to fist. Like <laughs> nobody wants this. You would brace for impact, right? You'd draw in, right? So everybody pretend like someone's about to punch you. What would you do? You feel all that, just draw in right there, all the way around. That muscle is called your TVA, your transverse abdominals, right? Okay? That muscle, anytime you want to engage that as much as you can throughout the day, because the stronger it is, the less injury you get. Okay. And this is the first thing you do when you, whenever you do any kind of weightlifting, whether we're doing body weight stuff or what, you're going to brace. So you brace, you want to, sh everybody would give me a little bit of a shoulder roll. Okay. So I want you to brace. So pulling your belly button towards your spine and then pull your shoulder blades back and down like you're trying to squeeze the bottom of your shoulder blades together. Doesn't have to be hard. You feel really solid, like just ready to do anything. So another thing is that when you bend, so if you're gonna bend, you're gonna bend from the hip joint. So everybody stand up real quick. This one, you sit down. Go ahead and sit down. You sit down with your knees or do you bend here first? You don't just do this, right? Where'd you bend from? Right here, your hip joint. This isn't your hip joint, right? So everybody stand up real quick. Bend from that, that's your hip joint. Everybody put your fingers in the, the, the crease of your hips where your body meets your legs, right? Push back. Your butt should go back. Unlock your knees, please. <laughs> Everybody wants to lock your knees. So if you're braced, you can't lock your knees. Can't do both. So everybody brace. Put your feet hip width apart. Stand nice and nice and tall. Belly buttons in. Stick your butt back. Are your knees locked? Whoa. If your knees are locked, you're not braced. Come back up. Did you notice how your spine doesn't flex when you do that? You ever seen one of those birds that go on like that? Like a, like a glass and they drink water. I don't know why everybody knows this, but we, we all do for some dumb reason. So you should look like one of those birds. Like you're just gonna hinge, get you some water, come back up. Is everybody's great grandmother trying to like communicate? Yeah, right, huh? Oh, there we go, okay, yeah. So one of these things, you should be hinging from the hip joint. Notice how your knees stay soft when you do that. If you don't, how much harder it is not to flex something else, right? Okay, you can go to the next one. So that's like the basic form, right? So when we're going to design a strength program, these are the things you need to know. That's all the stuff I've already said 300 times. So we're going to do it next. We're going to do it tomorrow. Um, the most common stuff, you can sit if you want, or you can stand if you want. I'm trying to sit on the floor or what. Um, the most common stuff that gets tight, neck, chest, 
the top of your forearm, front of your shoulders, your lower body, pocket muscles in your calves. Everybody's calves are tight. When your calves are tight, you go backwards. Not always, but a lot of times. Okay? So underactive, guess what? The exact opposite. So if your chest was tight, guess what? It pulls you forward, guess what hurts? That, right? So all these other things, next. I don't go through this, but we're gonna do all this tomorrow. So uh, go on, next one. Okay. If you come to the booth, I will have something called an arm aid that will show you how to massage your forearms. Anybody deal with wrist pain or has? Come use this, it's gonna feel amazing for the next one. Okay. Stretches, we're gonna do again, all this tomorrow, because we're kind of over. So don't worry about that. I mean, if you can go over a minute, because okay. it's already for the technical work. Yeah. True, true. Okay. So let's do this one. Who has neck pain? Oh, darn. Mm -hmm. That's like 80%. All right. So we all fit into that. Remember I said like 80 to 90%? Yeah, welcome to the club. It's all us. So if you're one of the one people who doesn't have pain, yeah, you're part of the 10% that hasn't gotten there yet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So you see this guy on the, on the right? We've got this this X. We call this upper crossed syndrome. So the so do you ever see anybody like this? They're like this way. So if you jut your head forward, you notice what happens to your spine. Yeah. So this it's hard. Like remember we just learned how to brace. Can you brace and jut your head forward? I mean, you can, but it's hard, right? How does it feel on your low back? Yeah. How does it feel on your upper back? Really not good. Oh, then it feels good on your neck either. Now do the opposite, chin tuck. I feel very strong and solid and a little better, right? Now I'm not suggesting you walk around like this all day. Like that is not what I mean. Okay. But that's what we call upper cross center, where your, your, your chest is tight and the upper part here is tight, but then also this is weak and this is weak, right? So here's how we're gonna stretch some of these. These are my three favorite neck, neck stretches. Uh, we're gonna go left side. So put your left arm, in the, in the small of your back, take your right hand and put it on the left side of your head, right above your temple. I want you to pull your ear straight over to your, your right ear towards your right shoulder. Still breathing? <laughs> You're not pulling really hard, okay? So I want you to gently pull. And if it doesn't feel good, don't do it, okay? If you've ever had any kind of neck stuff, this might not feel good. So this is for your upper traps. You should feel a stretch right along the top here, right? All right, now look down towards your right foot. Put your hand on the back side of your head. That stretches that muscle on the neck, on the uh, back of your neck. That's called your levator scapula. It elevates your scapula. Okay. Now, we're going to go opposite. We're going to stretch the front of your neck. Put your, your hand. You're still pulling your left shoulder towards the ground. Take your right hand, put it right above your left eyebrow, and gently tilt back. A little stretch right here. You might have to look around a little bit, but you're like going diagonal back. Yeah, at this guy, this is your SCM. It's the muscle that turns your head side to side and flexes your forward. And guess what we do when we play flute? Yeah, one of these gets tight, one of them gets weak, right? Now try the right side and see if you notice anything different. And take your right arm, pull your right shoulder towards the ground, and then tilt your head to left, pull it to left. Is that easier? A little bit? Is it different? Okay. So you're gonna tilt up, we'll stretch the left side, stretch the right side of your neck, and then down. All the different ones. And I'm just curious, do you guys notice the difference from left to right? Yeah, does any of those feel good? Which one feels best? <laughs> no, if they don't feel good, don't do them because neck can get kind of iffy, right? Which one feels good to some of y'all? <laughs> oh, the one where you go down? <laughs> yeah, that happens a lot. Yeah. So if we look at our upper track, the uh, cross track, it's because these on the back side get tight because they are, when you come forward, they're squeezing. Make sense? So when you do that, and then we stretch here, everybody's going to be happy. But you can't just stretch. We have to strengthen what's weak. Otherwise, things just go right back. That's why just stretching is not the best option. You can go there and All right. So we just did that. So your neck alignment exercise, like with the, uh, the chin tuck. So you think, so if you put your hand on the back of your head, you tuck your chin down and bring it slightly back. Press the top of your head up into the sky, right? That's the same kind of thing. Do you feel how that changes things on the back of your neck? It's a nice stretch. Well, you're also activating the muscles in the front of your neck. If they are, if you're out this way, they tend to get a little weak, right? So if you're, if you're spending a ton of time playing video games or on a computer or any of that as well, do it in a couple of days. You don't have to put your hand here, but it's just nice to feel that. So if you think, go up, right, like that, go to the next one. 
Okay, so then I think we're going to get into stretches and stuff. But like I said, we're going to do um, some of this tomorrow, which I will be uh, call this a two parter. So this is one of my absolute favorite stretches. It's rear chest. It is the absolute best thing. So let's just go through um, a couple of these. We're going to go ahead and do the uh, the next one. So these are for your wrist, right? Now, if you have any kind of wrist issues, be gentle with this. And actually, you should just be gentle in um, in general. So if you're going to turn around, you're going to use your chair. If you see what she's doing here, what you're going to do is you're going to put your hands directly underneath your shoulders, right? You want your elbows to be straight. You're going to touch your fingertips together and try to lift your finger, lift your knuckles off. Right? Okay. You guys want to give it a go? Look just like this, the one on the right. Okay. So if you turn around, put your hands directly underneath you on the chair, on the floor, whatever feels best. If you're super tall, you can use a piano, I guess. Don't be that tall. <laughs> right? So hands go directly underneath your shoulders. Exactly. Elbows are straight. Palms should be, the back of your hands should be flat. And I want you to try to lift your knuckles. Touch your fingertips together. You should not be able to lift your knuckles. Is it hard? No. <laughs> if you move your hands forward or back, it's going to be, it's going to change it. You want to correct any of your shoulders. Okay. So come out of that nice and easy. Okay. Nice and easy. We're going to follow that up with a wrist roll because your immediate reaction is you want to shake your hands, right? Don't shake your hands. We do not want to follow up stretches with violence. <laughs> okay. So everybody pop with me real quick. You're going to, you're going to, so we just did this stretch, right? This is better than doing this way. Any, any ideas why? why? Why would what we just did be better than doing this? Any ideas? Yeah, oh, bingo. Yeah, actually that's part of it. So number one, when you do this, you're putting a lot of pressure right here. And this, this is not a good place to put pressure and, and, and you can actually do anything with this one, right? And the goal is that we're trying to stretch your forearms, right? You're not really stretching your forearms very well here. You're mostly stretching the top of your hand. It's, it's not straight. So when you do this, there's a law that states you can't, you cannot contract two opposing muscle forces at the same time. So when you're trying to lift your knuckles, the muscles on the underside of your forearm kick on, which means that these are tight, they have to kick off. Okay. So then we're actually stretching the forearm muscles, which are the ones that tend to get tight and weak. Okay. So we're gonna follow that up with some wrist rolls. Everybody follow me. You're gonna put your fingers together. No, you your fingers. The backs of your hands. Okay. Cool. And then go the other way. Because what your body wants, your body wants to follow up static stretches with motion. Okay. That's why we automatically want to go to this, but let's not do that. <laughs> okay. So the next one we're gonna do is the underside. And if it doesn't feel tight, you don't need it. That's the beauty of it, right? But you're gonna turn around. You're gonna put your hands facing you. Fingers go wide. You're gonna put your hands directly underneath your shoulders again, right? And you're going to try to lift your fingertips. Shouldn't be able to. Let's see what we get. Can anybody lift their fingertips? You shouldn't be able to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And nice and easy. And don't shove your hands into the ground. It should be super gentle, super easy. So it's more important that your wrists are, that your elbows are straight than that your hands are flat. Okay. Can't do it. You shouldn't be able to. All right, come out of that nice and easy. Everybody look at me. We're gonna follow it up with some prayer rotations because you look like, right, right. Let's go back and forth. Yeah, you can go fast and go slow, whatever feels good. But now we've got that motion out of our bodies, right? Oh, she feels nice. Okay, that's it. Can go to the next one. Yeah, so it should feel good. Okay, you can go to the next one. So like I said, we're gonna do some of these. Um, Back to this. If you're game to get on the ground, we can do this real quick. Okay, so these are called open books, thoracic rotations. What you're going to do is you're going to lay on your side. You want to have enough room to spread out that you're not going to hit anybody. One, one chair is ready to go. Pick a side, pick a side. And your arms out to the side. So if you can see the picture of what she looks like, that's what we're going for. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> ah, so this is the thing. You're going to bring that top arm over to the other side, but I don't want you to think about your hand touching the floor. Think about trying to get your shoulder to touch the ground and don't let your hips move. 
Your knees should stay together and your hips should stay stacked on top of each other. That should be not to be moved. Yeah. Okay. You're going to go back and forth. Go back and forth like five times. Then I want you to switch sides and notice if one side is, is uh, easier than the other. Almost even two more knees. All right. Don't move your hips. Don't let them roll. Don't let your knees come apart. Yeah. Okay. Switch sides. Let's see what we get. When I first did this, <laughs> my arm just was like, whoop, just wouldn't go. <laughs> it didn't feel nice. <laughs> Hmm. Does anybody notice that one side is different? <laughs> Remember, keep your knees together. Don't let your hips move. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you should bring, so if you can see her picture, her hips are flexed at 90 degrees. Bring your knees way up. Yeah. Now go. It should be a little different. Don't let those, yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay, y'all can pick it up. Did you notice it's that should feel good though, right? Yeah, you can go to the next slide. All right. So then you can go to the next one. Those are those are uh these are all the exercises we're gonna do tomorrow. This is one of my absolute favorite phone teas and wise. This is the one that strengthens your shoulder blade, the muscles between your shoulder blades that hurt. Right? You can do these lying face down. You're not able to do this this position we just did where you hinge your hips joints back, right? You come up like this. If you're not able to hold this position, because I'm doing this lot, or this lot, right? So if you're not able to hold this, you can do it lying on the floor with your face on the floor. I'm not going to ask any of you to put your faces on this floor. <laughs> but if you put your arms out just like that, you're not trying to go back as far as you can. You're just trying to squeeze your shoulder blades together. And when we go like this way, prone, the whole point is that we're going against gravity. Okay? We'll do these tomorrow, but... Something to note, a lot of times what I see is that people do this, look like a V. You stood up, you should look like a T. Ever seen the statue of Jesus himself? Yes. Look like Jesus. You should look like Jesus, right? Not like this. You shouldn't look like a V. It's going to be, it's going to go higher than, than it should, right? But why is the exact opposite. This is a lot harder, so you should feel like you're pulling your shoulder blade. So maybe tomorrow, the next one. Bridges, next one. Oh, let's go ahead and do this one just, just for fun. This because we have a minute. Okay, go back one more. So we're going to do some bridges, okay? So who had low back pain? You did, right? A couple of us, right? This will help you get rid of it. So um, what the, it's the, a lot of the really effective exercises. Okay? So what you do, if you know what she's doing, she's got between her uh, knees to her shoulder, fine. Right? That's what we're going for. So you want to lay flat on your back to, with your feet close to your rear end. What I want you to do, you, you see like a dog tuck the tail between your legs, right? I want you to feel like you have a tail and you're tucking it, right? So tuck, remember we talked about bracing? So you're going to tuck and brace. Now squeeze your butt real hard. And I mean real hard. Yeah, real hard. Right? Now lift your hips in the air. And you shouldn't let your low back arch because you're tucking it, right? Squeeze, 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 squeeze like you're trying to hold in a fart in front of your crush. <laughs> That's how we've all been there. Yep, keep squeezing and come back down. And then keep going back up and down, up and down. Squeeze your butt as hard as you can. Your booty should be on fire in a minute. Raise your hand when the booty gets on fire and see how long it takes. Some of us could take a lot longer. Just squeeze. You should be squeezing real hard. Huh? Your back is on fire? Make sure you're tucking under. Yeah, because you don't want to be arching. Now, let's try an experiment, guys. If you come up in that bridge position, remember I just told you I want you to tuck? On top. You notice how your low back suddenly feels like suede and everything's loose? Right? So pull your belly button in, squeeze your abs, squeeze your butt. Notice how it neutralizes out? Yeah. Okay. So relax. <laughs> Your glutes are part of your core. Now you know why. Okay, you can go to the next one. Dead bugs are one of my favorites. And we're going to do these two just because they're already on the floor. <laughs> you guys should all look like a bunch of dying cockroaches. Yay. Okay. So if you don't, I'm um, probably not doing it right. So here's the thing. She's got a couple of different, different versions. So if you're lying flat on your back, I love to put these two together with regards to the same position, right? And they're both super effective. This is a lot harder than it looks. 
And a lot of these body weight exercises are so simple to me. They are not easy. So what I want you to do is you're gonna lay flat on your back, right? Pull your belly button in towards the floor. So you're gonna flatten out your low back. Pretend like you've got something really, um, you're really trying to hold something with your low back, right? Like if I had something like a, like a, like a, a band or something underneath your low back, there's no way I can pull it out because you're pressing your low back on the floor, right? So feet are on the floor. Bend your knees, feet flat on the floor. Or bend your knees, bend your knees, bend your knees. You should look like, um, so you're gonna lift your feet off the floor. Everybody lift your feet. So legs should be in the air, 90 degrees. Bingo, pull that low back and touch with the floor. Should be hard, okay? Relax your upper body. Thank you. <laughs> low back and touch with the floor, yes? Yes? Yeah, okay. All right, now I want you to drop one heel to the ground at a time. Don't let that, <laughs> just touch, just touch a heel, back and forth, back and forth, right? Just touch a heel, back and forth. Low back's not moving, is it? Is yeah, it? Not seen. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so to complete the dying cockroach look, I want you to bring your arms over your face, like straight above your head. You're gonna drop your right arm back behind you and your left heel touching the floor, and then come back. Now your left arm and your right heel, and back. And you're not gonna put your foot on the floor, you're just gonna touch, okay? Touch your heel, touch your hand, and go back. That low back should not come off the floor, guys. Pulling your belly button in your spine. <laughs> oh, ridiculous. Congratulations. <laughs> go back. Go back. You guys look great. <laughs> okay, go back. You guys feel that all the way around? It should be hard, right? Okay, there's a bunch of ways that you can uh, make that harder. You can go to the next one. But that, that's my favorite exercise. It's called dead dog for obvious reasons, okay? So we've done all these different kinds of exercises. Then remember I said you want to integrate that into a full body workout. Reason being, you can use your entire body to play your instrument. These are some of my absolute favorite exercises to do. They're simple, you can do them anywhere. A row and a squat, row and a squat, row and a squat. I do that with just about everybody in their first workout because most people can't squat well. It looks something like this. You don't want that, you want this. Or it looks like this, you know, people can't, you can't keep the heels on there, right? So, um, and then anything that has you pulling is going to be excellent. Um, and then specific step, you know, like for playing the flute, you want the, you want your shoulders to be strong. You also want your chest to be strong. There's a whole lot of different things you can do. So these are just some examples. We've got rows. You guys have all seen these in the gym, okay? Next one. Uh, and that's it. And these are some of the references of the uh, studies that I So. All right, and these are the things. So if you want to find me, these are all the places you can find me on the Instas and all the other stuff on the gram, on the interwebs and whatnot, right? So if you're looking for a personal trainer, by the way, um, I don't, I only have a couple slots left, but if you're looking for somebody close to you, when you're looking for one, these are the things you need to pay attention to. Because there are a lot of really bad things, right? You need to pay attention. Are, are they continuing in their education or did they just do something like 20 years ago? Or are they only taking a class at the, at the, the rec center? Um, number one, number one, they need to be able to explain the why of anything they're asking you to do. You should ask why, they should move. If they can't tell you why and they say, well, it's a good thing to do, keep pressing. And if they can't, eh, I, would, I would take it with a grain of salt, right? And then again, if you're looking for anybody who has, um, you know, word salad, a whole bunch of uh, word letters after the name, letter salad, whatever you want a whole bunch of letters after their name, look for those. NASM is National Academy of Sports Medicine Certified Personal Trainer, and CES is a corrective exercise specialist, which is a lot of the stuff we just did today. That's going to help them, um, they're going to have a, a, a better eye to deal with you as a musician, right? So we're going to do a bunch more of the exercises in the morning, but that is the presentation for today. Does anybody have any questions about it or about anything in general that we talked about today? That's great. We'll see you in a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.